The verdict is in. The trial of Daryl Brooks reaches its end. Arlene Rojas Castillo joins us live this morning from downtown Waukesha with a look at what lies ahead for that community. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning, Tom and Simone. Like you mentioned, we're here in downtown Waukesha, surrounded by businesses that have blue lights in their windows, and those were put up just after the parade attack last year to signify unity within the community. As you mentioned, the verdict is in in that trial and sentencing is up next on the agenda. Judge Jennifer Doro scheduled Monday for the next time that Brooks will be in court to pick a date for sentencing. But the verdict, as I mentioned, came down early yesterday morning with the jury deliberating for just over three hours before finding Brooks guilty on all 76 counts, including homicide in the Waukesha Christmas parade attack. Throughout the three and a half week trial, the process was everything but smooth with Brooks's repeated outbursts being sent to another courtroom as the judge attempted to keep the trial moving on schedule. But yesterday during the reading of the verdicts, Brooks showed not anger, but defeat. Brooks does have the opportunity to appeal his convictions, and if he were to, he would have to file a notice of appeal with the clerk of the Waukesha County Court. For the average time for an appeal process, in case you're wondering, from start to finish is about 10 months. Reporting live in downtown Waukesha, Elaine Rojas Castillo, TMJ4 News. Yeah, just another step in the process. Thanks, Elaine. And as the Waukesha community had to relive the parade tragedy over the last few weeks, we wanted to take a look back and even forward at how the community has come together to be Waukesha strong. Yeah, from the flicker of blue lights that you saw behind the lane to healing moments, spreading Christmas cheer. It was the family donating their time and skills, selling ornaments to benefit the community fund. A store served as a safe haven and a store donated proceeds from sales. These are the moments over the last 11 months that we've seen Waukesha strong embodied in the darkest of times. And now we look forward to this year's Christmas parade just over a month away. I'm looking for people to embrace and come and find the Christmas spirit. That's exactly what I'm looking for that, you know, um, it's kind of like the Polar Express. Do you still hear the bell? Do you hear the spirit of Christmas? Well, if you want to be part of this year's parade, there's still time to sign up as either a participant or a volunteer. We have that information on our website. And take a look at this. Here are the six people who lost their lives in the parade tragedy. It's Bill Hospel, Leanne Owen, Jane Kulik, Jenny Sorensen, Tamara Durand, and the youngest, Jackson Sparks. And Jackson's dad, Aaron Sparks, shared this tribute last night on Twitter. You can see little Jackson's family had his baseball jersey framed along with two pictures of him in his baseball gear. The tweet reads, quote, Today was a hard day, but a good day. This one is for you, my sweet little boy. Keep hitting homers in heaven till we meet again, end quote. That's really sweet. And as the community moves forward, Team J4 is honored to be broadcasting this year's Waukesha Christmas Parade. Susan Kim and Steve Shamras will be your hosts. You can watch it live right here on Sunday, December 4th, starting at 4 p.m.